Now I know a lot of people who are tempted to give smartwatches a go, but they're often put off by the big chunky design or the crappy battery life or the often ridiculous price tags. Which is where this cute little bugger here comes in. This here is the Amazfit GTS 2e, a light and compact smartwatch that costs just 120 quid in the UK and boasts the staying power of Sting in the sack. We are talking days of action from just a quick charge. Now I've already reviewed the fresh Amazfit GTR 2e smartwatch and for the last couple of weeks I've had its smaller sibling, the Amazfit GTS 2e, slapped on my pale ass northern wrist to see how it stacks up. So here's my full Amazfit GTS 2e smartwatch review and for more of the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the spangly new Amazfit GTS 2e looks and feels identical to last year's GTS 2. I'm talking the same 42mm aluminium alloy case plus the same 20mm silicone strap. And that's no bad thing because the GTS 2e is feather light to the point where you forget that it's even on you. Now it's a well known fact that my wrists are about as muscular as the average 8 year old boys and yet the Amazfit watch GTS 2e fits me absolutely perfect. It's certainly nice and compact and one of the most slender smartwatches that I've ever reviewed. And in more good news the Amazfit GTS 2e seems to be just as durable as the original as well. You've once again got that 50 meter water resistance so you can rock it in the shower, the swimming pool, wherever with that added reassurance and it also seems to be just as hardy as well. I've hardly treated this thing with respect over the last couple of weeks. I've definitely banged it about the place and so far touch wood the screen and the case are still in perfect nick and if you want to you can whip off those 20 mil straps and replace them at any time as well to freshen up the look so the physicality of this Amazfit smartwatch hasn't changed up at all compared with the previous generation and the same goes for that 1.65 inch AMOLED display it's 2.5D glass now instead of full on 3D so it's not quite as curved although there's bugger all real difference this screen is still perfectly responsive and there's no issues with the visuals either the 341 pixels per inch means that everything looks as sharp as a steak knife, while on top brightness the text is still just about legible on a bright day. Now you can set up the Amazfit Watch GTS 2e using the Zep app which is free to download from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. I've actually done you a full tour of that in my unboxing and comparison with all the new Amazfit watches. Go check that out if you want an in-depth look at all the different features and whatnot. It's basically pretty much what you'd expect though. You can have fast access to all of your main data from the past few days, however long you've been wearing the watch, including your heart rate, uh, what exercise sessions you've been doing, your stress levels. You can see exactly how close you've come to uh, beating your goal for the day. As you can see there, I've been about as active as an alcoholic sloth. And inside of the Zep app, that's where you do most of the setup as well, including what notifications you're going to get, vibration, strength, if you want a password on there, uh, what wrist you're wearing it on, all kinds of stuff. As for the actual watch UI itself, it's perfectly simple and straightforward. You get used to it really, really quick. It's actually not too dissimilar from the likes of Wear OS and uh, quite a lot of other smartwatch rivals. Now, as you can see, you've got an always on display, which you can activate and deactivate in the settings. Uh, once you turn on the watch with a quick push of that button or by actually just tapping the screen, uh, you then got access to the full watch face, which can be configured. Whoops, I didn't do a very good job of that, did I? Just long press on it and then you can choose from a variety of other options. If you dive into that Zep app you can upload a whole bunch more to the watch as well including some up-to-date ones like a Christmas reindeer. Uh -huh. Yeah like the Huawei watches it's a perfectly respectable selection that you've got on there. A variety of analog and digital ones all of course custom made to suit that square display. Now, if you scroll down you'll fast access the settings you can also check out the battery level things like that from within here as well you can change the likes of the screen brightness uh, if you don't want it on that auto mode. Now if you had to swipe up from that main watch face you access the notifications panel but unfortunately it's rather basic. You can basically read whatever notifications are coming in, you can check out your messages, things like that but you can't actually do anything with them, you can't archive them, you can't respond to them, absolutely bugger all. Now if you're to scroll left or right you basically access all of your main watch widgets so the likes of your heart rate monitoring, your music controller, your weather report, all the standard stuff you'd expect to see on a modern smartwatch. Meanwhile you've got a single physical button on the side of the Amazfit watch GTS 2e as well. Quick tap of that loads up the apps menu and you've got a reasonable selection of stuff on there including all the usual fitness trackers and everything, bit of stress uh, action, SPO2 measurement, weather, the alarms, you can access your a list of events that you've got coming up. But unfortunately there's no stopwatch in there which is kind of annoying. No stopwatch or just timer in general uh, which I definitely missed. And it's also worth noting that that dial does actually rotate as well but that doesn't actually do bugger all. So if you were to load up the apps menu and then rotate the dial it doesn't scroll you through your list of apps sadly. You have to use the touchscreen controls. 
And when the watch is awake, you can also double tap that side button in order to load up your favorite app of choosing, uh, which by default is the exercise tracker. Boy, does this watch really not know me at all. And as far as your sports stuff goes, uh, you get quite a lot packed into the Amazfit Watch GTS 2E, despite that cheap asking price. You've got built-in GPS support in there. You've also got that Bio Tracker 2 sensor on the back end, and that, of course, does your heart rate measurement. Uh, you can do your SPO2 measurement. With the SPO2, you have to be really, really, really still for quite a while before it eventually comes back with any kind of results. And as usual, of course, the Amazfit watch is not designed to be a proper medical device or anything. It's just to give you a vague guideline of your blood oxygen levels. I am maintaining still. Come on, just finish it. Oh, there we go. 94%. Oh, that's not particularly good. So the likes of the SPO2 levels, you have to uh, actually manually measure yourself. But the heart rate does do 24 hour heart rate monitoring, as you can see there. Now you've also got support for 90 different types of exercise tracking here on the Amazfit Watch GTS 2E, which is certainly all of the exercise that I could think of. If you dive into more, as you can see, it's all categorized uh, based on what kind of exercise it is. Then we've got hula hooping, frisbee, if you happen to be a student, although I'm guessing that students can't even do frisbee anymore unless it's inside their dorm rooms by themselves. Tug of war, uh, Gianzi kicking, whatever on earth that is. Now you've even got a bit of fishing in here, which Amazfit has generously termed an outdoor sport. So presumably that'll track how much exercise your arm gets, lifting a kind of tetley to your lips every couple of minutes. But regardless of what exercise type you choose, uh, the Misfit Watch GTS 2E will basically track exactly how long you do the exercise for. Uh, it'll measure your heart rate throughout. It'll tell you exactly how much intensity was involved, so exactly how much fat burning time you had, all of that kind of good stuff. And it'll also have a vague stab at how many calories you burned off as well. Overall, pretty standard stuff for your modern day uh, smartwatch. But of course, if you're really into your exercise, your fitness tracking and everything, there are better options out there, generally for a little bit more money, admittedly. You've also got full sleep tracking as well, which admittedly on other smartwatches usually feels more pointless than go faster stripes on a Ford Fiesta. But here you do at least get pretty comprehensive breakdown of how much light and deep sleep you're enjoying, along with suitably stern scolding whenever you stay up too late watching dodgy anime. Although at least this all explains my premature hair loss and my saggy face. Now because the Amazfit Watch GTS 2E is an essential version of last year's Watch GTS 2, that means that Amazfit has had to strip out a couple of less necessary features in order to drive down the price a bit. So for one, there's no built-in speaker on the Watch GTS 2E, so that means you can't actually take an income and call on this smartwatch. All you do is you get a call notification, and then you'll have to do it the old-fashioned way, pulling your phone out of your pocket, out of your bag, in order to speak to someone. I know, right? What a ball lake. And you can't actually store music on the Watch GTS 2E to take with you when you're pounding the pavement, hitting the gym or whatever. All you can do is control the music that's playing on your smartphone. So you will have to have your phone with you at all times if you want to enjoy a bit of that pumped up adrenaline. Get in, you know, like... Rrr. And this may be an essential version of the original Watch GTS 2, but you do actually get one bonus feature on here that you won't find on the original watch, and that is a temperature monitor. And as you can see there, this can actually track your temperature throughout the day, just like your heart rate as well. And then it'll give you a little warning if it exceeds sort of standard levels. You can have it set to either centigrade or Fahrenheit as well, dependent on your region. And considering having a high temperature is one of the key indicators that you might possibly have a rather popular disease that's doing the rounds right now, that's definitely a good addition to have. Now let's finish up with the battery life. And Amazfit reckons it uses the exact same size of battery for this essential version of the smartwatch compared with the, the original GTS 2 from last year. But all the same, it reckons that the battery life has increased from 7 days to 14 days on the Watch GTS 2e. Now I've got no idea what you've got to do exactly to get this supposed mythical 14 days of battery life because I certainly got nowhere near that. I tended to get around sort of four to five days of use at this bad boy, but that admittedly was with all of the features turned on, like the 24 heart rate tracking, the always on display, the notification support, all that good stuff. And that is still a better result than you get on most other smartwatches out there, the likes of the Apple Watch and many Wear OS devices as well, which tend to only last a day, maybe two days at a stretch. Unfortunately, of course, the Huawei watches are much better, generally given at least a week or two of use per charge. So if you're really keen on extremely long battery life, then they are a good one to check out. And I'm still perfectly happy with four to five days of use per charge. And then you've got the bundled uh, magnetic dock, of course, which comes uh, with the Amazfit Watch GTS 2E. Just slap that into your laptop or whatever, stick the watch on the other end, and you generally get a full charge from empty in around sort of 90 minutes to two hours. And that right there is my full final review of the Amazfit Watch GTS 2E after having it slapped 
on my pale skinny little wrist for a good couple of weeks using it as my full-time smartwatch. And I've got to say, I do personally prefer the GT R2e, which I reviewed uh, a couple of weeks previously. It's a bit chunkier, but I prefer the circular finish to it. And you do get better battery life as well, although that's not to say that the battery life here is bad. And the GTS 2e was a perfectly commendable smartwatch. For 120 quid, you get a lot of smarts packed in there, full fitness track and all of that good stuff. The notifications handling could be a bit better, but hey ho. Anyway, if you want to see my roundup of the very best smartwatches that you can get right now, I did one of those just before Christmas, so go check that out. I'll try and remember to post a link up here or in the end credits bit, which is coming up in a second. In the meantime, please do pog subscribe, ding that notifications bell if you haven't already, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.